All right, so now that we have the door open here, let's walk through some of the main components inside of the spirit box. First of all, one of the things you're gonna notice directly back is going to be a big silver box. And on that box is a button uh, that has a title of main power. Uh, so basically, like with your phone or your computer, if the spirit box starts to act glitchy or funny, basically all you have to do is flip that main power off, count to about 10 seconds, flip the power back on. You're not gonna lose pricing or anything else that you've already programmed into your spirit box. Give it a couple of minutes to reboot and that should resolve most of uh, your, your issues if the spirit box is acting funny. The next thing we wanted to point out here is the radio. So this box at the top is the radio and as you probably know, the spirit box accepts many forms of payment from cash to credit and debit to uh, smart payments like uh, Google Wallet and Apple Pay. So this is how your cashless forms of payment are transmitted. This talks to cell phone towers, uh, uh, allowing that information to be communicated. Also, you have access to online reporting showing you all of the sales data through your spirit box. You can log in from a computer or download an app to see this information. This is also how that information is transmitted. Below the radio, uh, what you're gonna notice here is the cash box. So when customers do cho choose the cash form of payment, uh, this is where the cash is stored. So you can easily swing the door open to see the cash situation at any given time, or there is a yellow trigger at the top allowing the whole box to be released. Now, uh, if customers are telling you that it won't accept their bills or a customer tells you that their bill got jammed, when you remove this, coin, uh, this, this cash box, you're generally able to see where that jam might be pretty apparently. Uh, you're able to remove that bill pop this thing back in and that should clear up any issues with uh, cash uh, jams. Down towards the bottom, this is the coin mechanism. And uh, basically to release this uh, coin mechanism or this coin box, you, there's a uh, lever over on the right hand side here, this back side that I just flip up. That's gonna release the door here and allow us to access the different components of the coin uh, mechanism. So first of all, I wanted to show you the coin cassette to remove the actual cassette itself from the rest of the components, put your fingers in the top uh, handle here, pull up, and this is gonna slide out. All right, so while we're talking about coins, it's really important that we point a few things out. So first of all, uh, it's really important that we maintain adequate levels of coins of all denominations. So the way that customers are given change for purchases, uh, cash purchases through the spear box is with $1 coins. Or, or quarters in some situations. So for example, if someone buys a $12 t-shirt for $15, they're gonna get three $1 coins back. If any of these tubes are extremely low, it's going to throw the client or the customer a exact change only message, which is not going to allow them to put in bigger bills, which means you're going to lose sales. So it doesn't matter if it's the $1 tubes, the quarter tubes, or even the nickel tube, make sure they're at least a quarter full so your customers have a good buying experience. To take it to the next level, it's really important that we have uh, adequate levels of $1 coins. These can be a little bit trickier for you to find. Sometimes it's just a conversation with a local bank to store those for you. Sometimes they have to order them for you. But $1 coins are gonna be very important because again, from a buying experience, you don't wanna get a bunch of quarters back for change when you make a purchase.